Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is another edition of Reading Through the Bible. In this edition of Reading Through the Bible, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 2. Christ's example of humility. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort for love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambitions or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to its own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is in Christ Jesus, who thought who though he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross therefore God had highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lights in the world. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now that only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God's For it is God who works in you, both to will and work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as the light of the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Timothy and Ephroditus I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be generally concerned for the welfare, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, but you know Timothy's proven worth, how a son with a father has served me with the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how it will go with me, and I trust the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. I thought it necessary to send you Ephroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all, and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in the service to me. So the first part of chapter 2 is really important because it shows that Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man. But he humbled himself and became a man. And we know that based on the scripture, he came to the earth not as a king, but he came as a carpenter's son. He literally was the low of lows. He would be considered like a low poverty person if he was in today's time. So he didn't come with riches and glory, but he humbled himself. He had everything in heaven and was exalted and had all the power and he became a man. He still had the power, but walked among us 
just like us. He walked and experienced things like a human does to show us the way. The next part of this chapter talks about being the light uh, in the darkness. So as a Christian, we need to be the light of the world. We should not be doing things that are similar to the world. We need to be set apart to show an example to others that we are in Christ. If we participate in similar activities that non-Christians do, if we go to parties and get drunk and do all sorts of worldly things, how, how are they going to know that we're a Christian if we don't stand firm in our beliefs? And then the last part is talking about um, disciples of Christ, one who almost died, and he healed, so now they can celebrate that he is returning. Thank you for listening to this edition of Reading Through the Bible. We will finish up with chapter one next.